Hello, church family. We are excited to have you here today on March 20th, Friday, for our daily devotional. We would love to just keep you guys in the loop. We care about you. We want to know that if anything's going on, how we can be praying for you. And uh, if you're struggling with anything, let us know. Feel free to leave a message here, email us, call us, Facebook us. Uh, you can Instagram us. Just get a hold of us. And uh, we would love to pray for you and be there during this challenging time. We're definitely praying for you, praying for all those affected by this uh, coronavirus and just how it's impacting our schools, how it's impacting our works, uh, our health, and so much more. And uh, we ask that you continue to help pray with us, uh, continue to pray with us, and as we get through this difficult time together. And I just want you to know that we are there for you, here for you, and uh, we have a lot of exciting things going on still, uh, even a week into it. We have a couple great opportunities if you're looking if you're stuck in the house and you want to get out this weekend, we have so, originally we were going to do a yard church, yard cleanup day. And uh, unfortunately, we can't get more than 10 people together, although I think we might still be okay for this event. But uh, if you're bored, you want to pick up some sticks. We got a ton of stuff in the front yard that we need to just move back by the shed. We have a huge pile there. Hopefully this summer, once things get back to normal, we can do a nice little fire pit, get some marshmallows, cook some hot dogs, a uh, good old time. And, uh, the ease of some of that uh, sticks and so forth. Also, if you're available to help run errands or drop off care kits for families in need, uh, we are looking to put together a program to help make our food pantry mobile. And so we are trying to find names and availability for people. I know a lot of people out there, they don't want to leave the house. So we totally love that. And uh, if you don't want to leave the house, good, definitely. If you are in need of food or uh, you need help, let us know. We'll stop by the store. We'll pick it up. We'll drop it off. And uh, we care about you. We want you to be healthy and safe during this time. We have a lot of great opportunities throughout the church going on uh, as soon as we get back to, from digital back to physical. Uh, we have several projects throughout the church that we're just waiting for God to really bless us. The projects are beyond our uh, allocated budget for the year. So we can't afford to do things like replace the uh, fountain that's in our hallway. And uh, we're looking at a couple other things that are a little bit more on the expensive side. But um, yeah, God will provide, he'll get us through this and we'll be stronger as a community, stronger as a church as a whole. And uh, we are excited for what God is doing. So we know that God's gonna use this to strengthen our faith. He's gonna strengthen our conviction, our resolve. And he's gonna use this time for us to slow down a little bit and remind us of what's important. And so the question I have for you guys today as we kick into our daily devotion is, how is God using the coronavirus to strengthen your faith? What? Yeah, no. How is he using these situations and these circumstances to strengthen your faith in him? Because we see all throughout scripture that Israel, the Christians, the believers, the early church, they all faced hard challenges and that God used that to strengthen the church Early church faced massive persecution where the Christians were being round up and uh, basically killed for their faith, and it, it made them it made it stronger. It seems kind of contradictory. You think, well, that'll make it harder for us to do things, but what it's doing is that it's bringing people together. It's what God really wants us to do. Some of the things I was thinking about as we uh, as I was getting ready for today is that the church is more together now than more together now and focusing on what is the purpose of the church, helping those in need, being together, looking out for each other, calling each other, texting each other, saying, hey, how are you doing? Is there anything I can do for you? Can I pick up something at the store for you? The church is more available now than it has ever been. And we're focusing more on connecting with you and making sure you're okay than we are on a Sunday morning service. So much of our focus at church is getting ready for the one hour we get together on a Sunday morning. But really, you know, it's the 167 hours that we want to focus on outside of that. It's all the time that we want to spend throughout the week, that we're praying for each other, that we're lifting each other up, that we're asking how we're all doing. And we're listening. You know, we're, we're listening to what other people are going through, and we're supporting them and encouraging them. And we're leaving those comments, and we're posting those uh, on the news feed saying, hey, you know, God's going to get us through this. We're going to be okay. And so God is really, he's sharpening the vision and the focus of his church. And even though everything's crazy right now, 
we're going to come out of this with a renewed hope and a renewed conviction of that God is our provider and that he gets us through hard times. One of the great things about this past week is that people are forced to stop and think about what's important to them. I think about it, like we get in our routines and we just go and go and go. And yet we kind of forget why we're even going. Why are we going to work to pay for bills of stuff we don't need? Well, let's think about that. Do we really need those things? Maybe we can pay it forward to somebody who does need them. Maybe we can bless somebody with it. Maybe we can slow down a little bit. One of the biggest things coming from, from a church perspective is that we have moved discipleship of our kids back to the homes. For decades, we expected that the church would raise our kids in discipleship and in evangelism and all these Christian uh, disciplines. And so we, take, we expect if we take our kids to church, then they'll automatically grow up to be strong Christians. But really what it comes down to is when our kids see us in our faithfulness, they see us praying, that's what strengthens their resolve. When they see what we value, they value. And so this whole week has really pointed discipleship and growing our next generation back at home where it belongs. It's kind of like the idea, if you want your kid to be, to have great characters and morals, you don't send them to school to get those. You teach them at home and you teach them the importance of responsibility and a strong work ethic. Like let school focus on what they're good at, but these kind of things we need to bring back home. One of the other things is that so far, we've been inconvenienced just enough to wake us up out of our slumber. And when I was thinking about that, I don't know if any of you have seen this Casting Crowns song, but uh, we're going to attempt to play it to help uh, use today's devotional as a test run for other things. And so I want to switch over and see if we can actually do this. So bear with me if this uh, blows up in my face and uh, shorts out all of our computers. So we're switching over. If you guys have heard this song, great. You've been blessed. Awakening by Casting Crowns, Only Jesus album. So good. So, so good. Like, I can't get enough of this album. And uh, they did not pay me for that promotion. It's just really is that good, especially in hard times. So I jumped right into 41 seconds. We're just going to listen to the one chorus and just think about how that relates in your life and uh, what that means. Lord, what were you saying? I must have fallen asleep. Could have sworn I heard you talking. Or maybe it was just a dream. It sounded something like redemption. An echo from a younger day. Lord, how long have I been drifting? My tears are falling as I pray. Lord, wake up to see I lift my head, I lift my head. The search lights found me here at my head. We're going to go ahead and stop right there. You kind of get the point of where I'm going at with this. Like, how long do we get stuck in our slumber where we check mark uh, church on Sundays and then everything goes back to normal on Mondays? Or how long do we focus on just going to work to get a paycheck? Whereas God has so much more for us that He calls us to be missionaries and ambassadors to a lost and hurting world. He calls us to strengthen us in times of crisis that we can come around others. And most importantly, I think that we need to be reminded is that we who are blessed, whose lives are pretty good, we are called to forfeit and to give those blessings to others. You know, I look back throughout scripture and I see how God has blessed his nation. And it was so that the nation could be a blessing to others. And in this time where you know, if you are blessed, who is it that you can pass those blessings on? How can you use your faithfulness in God to say, you know what, God has loved me so much. Let me share some of that love with other people. And during these times, I think we need to remember that God's blessings will never run out. His promises and his provisions will never dry up. And, you know, during this time, there's so much fear and there's so much chaos going on. And 
there's so many rumors going around about what's next and what the government's doing here and what's the governor saying here. Like, like it's going to happen either way. What we need to do is figure out what is our response to those things. When the world looks at us, are they seeing a confident believer who's saying, yes, I understand things are scary, but I serve a God who gives me courage. And that's what we want to portray. And there are times where blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. And blessed are the righteous. And I mean, Jesus has, if you read through the Beatitudes in the book of Matthew, he just says all of these things that will be blessed through hard situations, through difficult times. And that's so important to remember that. Uh, today's verse of the day is going to be in Hebrews 11. Uh, we're just going to look at Hebrews 11, uh, 1 for this verse. Uh, if you have our devotional, there is a whole section in here to read that we'll come back to. But for right now, God is reminding us that now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Now, do you have that faith? Are you confident in what you hope for and the assurance about what we do not see? Do you see that God is moving in mighty ways? Do you see how he's reminding his church to be the church? Do you see how he's doing these things that are causing us to recalibrate and refocus, to go back to the roots of what the gospel says, to go back to what it means to be in community, to, to focus on his mission above our conveniences? What if as believers we spent as much time discipling and witnessing as we do at the gym? What if we spent more time supporting missionaries than we do supporting the box office? Like, think about it for a second. You know, God has blessed us with the ability to work and to get money. And how can we use those blessings to glorify him in all things? I think one of the biggest things is that we are reminded that our lives are not our own and that our entertainment is not the first priority in our lives. And we need to, we need to reflect on those. So as we jump into today's devotional, we're going to be, we've already talked about the importance of pausing and listening and writing things down. And we're going to be jumping into, today we're going to be talking about faithfulness and what that means in the book of Habakkuk. So Martin Luther King Jr. said, take the first step in faith. You don't have to see the whole staircase. Just take the first step. You know, maybe for you, that's just writing your phone number down and your name on a piece of card and sliding it in your neighbor's door saying, hey, if there's anything your family needs, give us a call and we'll drop it off. You don't need to open the door. You don't need to have a full conversation. You just need to remind them that you're here for them. And after all this gets normalized and they ask you, hey, why did you do that? Because Jesus loves you, because God loves you and he's caring for you and he wants to provide for you. And because he blessed me, he wants me to give my blessings to you because you matter and you're loved. And when Jesus went to the cross, he went to the cross for you and me. All right, so back to our devotional by Craig Groucho, Hope in the Darkness. When it comes to faith, there's going to be waiting involved. I love the way C.S. Lewis put it. I am sure that God keeps no one waiting unless he sees that it is good for him to wait. All right, that's just so good. We need to read that again. C.S. Lewis said that I am sure that God keeps no one waiting. God keeps no one waiting unless he sees that it is good for him to wait. How much time have you spent waiting this week, waiting in lines, waiting on the news, waiting on that email to come through? How, many, how much time has that waiting caused fear to rise up inside of you or, or given you anxiety? And we're supposed to be called to give these things over to God. We can trust God to do what's best for us at the right time, even during a crisis. Even when we're forced to wait, God often reinforces his promises to us and reminds us of his presence. It might be through his word, by a whisper, through a person, or simply, simply through our believing by faith that he is with us. There's nothing greater than saying, God, I need you to remind me that you're good. And then he sends his Holy Spirit to just put his presence on you. And you just sense that everything's going to be okay. As yet fear that was causing you to tremble and shake is just gone. Even when we're 
forced to wait, God often re reinforces his promises to us. Oh, I'm sorry, I just read that. Oh, apparently, we've got to read it again. God often reinforces his promises to us and reminds us of his presence. It might be through the word, by a whisper, through a person, or simply through our believing by faith that he is with us. Apparently, he wanted us to really focus on that. If you want to strengthen your faith, I know of no better place to look at than the book of Hebrews. There, in chapter 11, we find the Faith Hall of Fame, a list of so many people who struggled, waited, lived by faith, and saw God's promises fulfilled. There we find people going through unbelievable things, seemingly impossible trials, and ultimately experiencing a new level of intimacy with God, even as they witness more of his power. By faith, Noah obeyed God and built an ark, saving his family. By faith, Abraham and Sarah received a son God promised them, even though they were past the age of childbearing, like old, old. By faith, Joseph overcame betrayal, slavery, false accusations, and imprisonment to save the nation of Israel. That dude had a tough life. By faith, God's people left Egypt and walked through the Red Sea as it parted on either side of them. Now, it's important to remember that when they walked through Egypt, they, or the Red Sea, they did it after their feet were wet. It didn't just part and say, okay, here's a giant sign, come on through. No, they had to step out into the water before it parted because they stepped out in faith. By faith, the Israelites marched around the walls of Jericho and the walls came crumbling down, tumbling down. These weren't perfect people, far from it. In fact, they all had their struggles and doubts and their mistakes and infidelities, their flaws and their weaknesses, but they persevered in their faith and waited on God again and again. By faith, you will get through this. We will get through this. Our country will get through this. Our world will get through this. It'll come at a cost, but it'll also come at a great blessing. And the blessings keep coming, guys. I'm telling you, like, if we pursue God in this and we seek him first, he's going to show up. And when God shows up, miracles happen, amazing things happen. The community comes together. People will start caring for each other. We start to know that we're valued and that people matter and that we need to go out into a lost world and love on them and tell them the good news. And there really isn't anything else. Like your jobs are important and it's important to put a roof over your family. And um, it's good to be responsible. But at the end of your life, when you look back at it, how many people are you bringing into eternity because you were bold and courageous enough to be a little awkward in sharing your faith. When you look at heaven, how many people will you be high-fiving and hugging because they accepted Christ because they saw how good he was in your life? So think about it. If you have had everything figured out, you wouldn't need faith. You could live simply by your own understanding, your own wisdom. After all, we're Americans. We just do it. We put a man on the moon and we do it. We need to figure out how to do something bigger and better. Then we train, we figure it out, and we do it. We, we hire the biggest and the best and the brightest, and we get things done. But as believers, we trust in God, and he does it. And we have a front row seat of watching God move in amazing ways. By your logic, by, but not by faith, but when you don't understand something that gives you the unique opportunities to deepen your faith, all that we're going through is ultimately to bring God glory. No matter if your marriage is good or your marriage isn't good, if your singleness is hard or your singleness is going great, if your kids are doing well, if they're struggling or they're sick, like all of the things that we face in life are to bring God's glory, which deepens our faith. Oswald Chambers said, faith is deliberate confidence in the character of God whose ways you may not understand at the time. You guys should write that down. Like, chew on that for a little bit. That's pretty meaty. Like, it might not get it the first time, but faith is deliberate confidence in the character of God whose ways you may not understand at the time. So today we're going to be praying that, God, you will grow our faith way beyond our own need to figure everything out. We might not have it all figured out next week. We, might, we don't know when schools are going to start back. We don't know when the quarantine's going to be lifted. You know what? We serve a God that's so big that we don't need to have all the answers. We trust and we take that next step forward. 
And so guys, I just want to encourage you that he is that good, that God is amazing, that he's going to get us through this. And I'm going to tell it on every single devotional, because if you're jumping in and this is your first one, you need to understand that God is here. He is with us. He is walking with us through each day. He is with us at the stores. He is with us when we're washing our hands. He is with us in all times. And that the world is going to go crazy. And it always has. It always will. Nothing has changed in 6,000 years. Everything that we're facing as humanity with our sin and our desire to fear and be anxious and to worry, these are all things that have been the same for humans ever since the beginning. We're fighting the same battles, the same lies, the same trickery that, that we have for generations and generations. But what's new is that Christ is in us. His Holy Spirit dwells in us, that we are strengthened by him, that we can get through this. And we have opportunities as a church to do new things. We have all kinds of new things that we're going to try to do. We're looking at doing a youth uh, dad jokes, which is going to be terrible. And I hate the idea, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully uh, our youth will love it. And we're looking at doing some arts and craft kits that we're going to be dropping off at families' houses and mailing out to them. And we have an Easter challenge going out on Monday for those that are interested. And we just want to remind you, like, the church is still very much live and active. The church is in a hundred different homes and we have a hundred different churches and we want the church needs to move. It needs to speak now more than ever. And we need to be bold in our convictions. Tomorrow morning on Saturday, March 21st, we're going to be having a men's uh, online Bible study at 830. Uh, we'll include a link somewhere online, social media, email, and uh, we'll get that out to you guys soon. Uh, we're looking to schedule the youth event, women's uh, Bible study, and a few other things. And uh, we'll be having Wednesday night and Sunday morning. Uh, we'll be streaming. And you don't want to miss a Sunday. This is a community that learns. Ironically, I, we had already planned out the series back in December. And it, it fits so well because there's so much for us to be learning as believers, as the church throughout this time. And... Maybe for some of us, it's learning to trust Jesus. Maybe for some of us, it's learning to pick up our phone and connect and get accountability and be vulnerable with other people. But God is teaching us more now than he has in the last 10 years for some of us. And a lot of people are going to come to Christ through this because they're going to see the church flex its faith muscle. And uh, you're a part of that. This is on you, church. We're in this together. And so I want to encourage you, wash your hands, stay healthy. Get in God's word, turn off the Netflix, turn off the Disney Plus, get your family together, have dinner together, call somebody, just pick three contacts a day and just reach out to them. Maybe it's somebody you haven't talked to in months. They still need to hear from you. They need your encouragement because you are the church. All right. We won't have a devotional this Saturday, but we will see you bright and early Sunday morning for an online service. Be good, guys. Be like Christ. We'll see you soon.